that person was Letitia Stouk. And I realized that. And I said, well, if you got such a problem with this, why don't we go talk about it? So when, when this, uh, <clears throat> you, you described two vehicles. Wow, what a day it was in the Gannon Stouk trial. Well, actually, it's the trial of his evil step monster, Letitia Stouk. And boy, she got pretty giddy towards the end of the day. Today is Monday, April 10th, and it was a heavy day. The trial ended today with the testimony of reporter Spencer Wilson. He was the journalist originally from Missouri who captured that all-important interview, the only interview a reporter got with Letitia Stauk about four days after Gannon was reported missing. The interview took place on January 31st, 2020. Spencer caught Letitia and her big mouth rolling out of town. And the way she reacted today in court when Spencer described how he got that interview made Letitia positively giddy. At one point you see her like looking down and laughing and then towards the end, well, she's looking down and she's kind of like smiling like at his version of events and at the end, she has her head down so much and is covering her ears so much that Letitia didn't even react to her attorney speaking to her. I will play his entire testimony, his entire cross-examination. The cross-examination for Spencer was really brief, but the direct examination was really full and they included on the screen, we can see more on the screen today, hallelujah. We can see the entire interview as they played it, all the footage that he played that was available. Spencer was a one-man band back then, working for KKTV. He handed Letitia a microphone pack and clipped the microphone somewhere on her. The way he got the interview was that Spencer and other journalists in the area had been looking into the disappearance of Gannon Stouk. We learned today that cops were already on Letitia's butt. At that point, that week, they had already caught her and her daughter Harley Hunt at Marshall's. We're still waiting for Harley Hunt's testimony. If she takes the stand ever, it will be interesting for her to put it out there and describe how much she knew, if anything, about Gannon's demise. But Letitia's all giddy and shaking her head because Spencer is explaining he saw this caravan of people rolling past reporters and someone's hollering at him out the window January 31st, apparently. You're not reporting the story correctly, blah, blah, blah. You know, probably saying stuff like fake news or whatever. So Spencer takes the opportunity to say, wait a minute, that's Letitia Stouk. That's the stepmom that everyone wants to speak to. So Spencer got the interview. He instructed Letitia, you know, meet me at this construction site about a half mile down the road somewhere so all the reporters wouldn't glom onto her like vultures, like it would have happened. It would have been a big presser. I'm glad it happened this way because Spencer got that one-on-one -on -one interview with Letitia. She refused to show her face, so that's why we saw the back of her head, which is better. I hope he had gotten some shots of her hand, and I still hope we get to see any raw footage that may have been cut out. That's one thing on cross-examination. Letitia's lawyer was asking Spencer what happened to the rest of the footage because Spencer did describe how Letitia was treating it as if she's filming a movie. At the end, she films this response. We just wanted to add a message to Gannon from my family is that we love you and miss you and we know that you come home soon. And Gannon, I can't wait you can come home and let everyone know that you're okay. We love you. Gannon, we want you to come home, blah, blah, blah. So you can tell everyone that, you know, you're okay. I can get my apology, especially from my husband, blah, blah, blah. That's why we see that very tail end and you'll see it coming up where she turns on the tears. Spencer said that was the portion that Letitia asked for a retake. Maybe she realized, oops, that wasn't my best work. The first take, which we don't see her begging Gannon to come home. But at the end, that's why we see that switch. We don't see her face, but we can hear her say, Gannon, we just want you to know, turning on that voice again. So I wish we had the first version, everything extracted, all the points where she sent Harley away. She had Harley Hunt come over. She was on a hot mic. Huh? Want me to just say yes? No, just answer the question. Yes, you, you came home for work and you, you can verify Gannon was at home. Yeah. Harley is asking, do you want me to just say yes? So obviously, Harley was under the influence of this evil woman. 
that's why I still catch her a break. She's on TikTok. You know, she's an influencer now. I'm sure she's trying to move on and live a better life with her brother Gannon gone. We did learn from different experts. Leticia at Marshall's was telling Harley, hollering when she was just getting Harley's phone and her car seized and Leticia's acting like a crazy fool and trying to run until they pull out weapons and command her to stop. Leticia was screaming out, Harley, don't tell him anything. Leticia had put a bunch of pressure on her own daughter to not speak. And so we see that in Spencer's interview she gets sent away. She just confirms there was a hike that Gannon was home after the hike. She gets sent off. And then it just was, I'm gonna go to play at a friend's house. And then it was just, uh, I'm off to go to play at a friend's house. But Leticia is trying to be the puppet master, the evil puppet master. So I don't know why she's so smiley with Spencer and shaking her head as if she's negating what Spencer is saying the way he got the interview. But ultimately he met her in the construction field. He got that interview. He found it off. They noted the different timestamps where Leticia intentionally spoke about Gannon in the present tense, but then she switched and spoke about Gannon in the past tense. Today was heavy, it started off heavy. I knew we were going to see the medical examiner's report. I still did not expect those photos, the intensity. You hear about injuries, but seeing them is a whole nother thing. Just his little face was blurred, but they showed his injuries, his 18 stab wounds or lacerations. You learn the difference between these things. And just like I was thinking in my last video, the medical examiner did surmise that there were defensive wounds on his little hands. So he was probably still awake and fighting her. There was a gunshot wound to the mandible, to the jaw that went back there. And he was just so little. So you almost have to remove yourself, try to remove yourself from the emotions of it. I was praying. I don't know if Gannon's parents were in the courtroom at all today but if they were i was just really praying for them i can't imagine seeing those types of photos it's necessary to a degree because it gets to show people look this is what she is accused of doing and she's not even denying that she did it she's just claiming it was all based on insanity gannon did have certain substances in his system like hydrocodone that was a bit unusual for a boy his age so we don't know if Leticia was giving him these things and that part was rough. Other than that, we just saw a lot of detectives, a lot of we heard the phone calls where Leticia's calling about that fake polygraph test and she wanted her results. And how can I help? I guess, um, I didn't get any confirmation about well, my test I paid for. And so just for reference sake, <clears throat> before we get too, too deep into the phone call, uh, sounds like there's two voices. That's correct. Um, do you recognize one of the voices? I do. Is it the female voice? Yes. And whose voice is that? That's the defendant's voice. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Angela. Okay. Can I have your name, please? I can check if we've got the order here. Yes. Tisha, can you, your last name is Stout. Yes. Can you please state your name for me? Okay, yeah, but I can see that we've received that, and we have actually sent the test. Have you not received that yet? Have what now? We have already sent the results to your email account. I don't, I don't have them. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, okay, let me try resending that, and if you don't receive it, give us a call back. Okay, I right, thank you. Thank you, though. Bye bye. So, Special Agent Cohen. Um, the phone number that, uh, at the very beginning, let me back up, there you can hear ringing. Does that indicate that this is a phone call that was initiated by the defendant to a particular place? That's correct. Um, were you able to investigate and determine who it was that she was calling? I was. What was the phone number that she was calling? Objection Foundation would be. Mr. Allen. Uh, I can lay some foundation, Judge. Okay. <clears throat> Um, when when a wiretap is obtained, does it record both the outgoing and uh, receiving phone numbers? As um, part of the overall wiretap in this investigation, we also installed uh, something called a pen register trap and trace device. Uh, that particular device will record both the um, outgoing or incoming phone number from the subject telephone. And uh, so does that mean that the receiving phone the person that is being dialed or a place that the that the uh, originator is dialing would be caught in this trap and trace. 
That's correct. It's identified as either an outgoing or incoming phone call, and we have the telephone numbers on both ends of that conversation. And then were you able to look up that particular phone number that was dialed for this call and see it being associated with a particular web page? Yes, I was. What web page was that? Fakepolygraph.com. Okay. And is that what all of these phone calls are in relation to is calls originated by the defendant to a purportedly fakepolygraph.com web page? That's correct. My help. Hi, yes, I was just talking to you. Um, is there a way you confirm confirm where you sent those? Because I, I still didn't get them. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to get that resend for you. So if you wait for the next sort of 10, 15 minutes and let me know if you haven't received it by then. I was saying, can you, can you check the email? Because I just want to make sure. Okay, yeah, give me a moment. Uh, spelled T E C I A. L Y N N two zero zero six at yahoo dot com. Okay. Okay, cool. So you said okay. like ten or fifteen minutes. Correct. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Hello, how can I help? Hi, yes, I'm calling again. I still didn't get that email. Okay, can I ask your name please? It's last name Stalk X T N Ah right, yes, perfect. I can see here. Uh, Ten fifteen minutes, and you said it again. I still don't have. It. Yeah, no. Unfortunately, it's actually been blocked by management this order um, due to the content of the questions. So we're not going to be able to send this report. Okay. So do, do I get my money? Uh, unfortunately, not on this case. No. Um, obviously, due to our terms and conditions, it does clearly state that any um, sort of illegal activities or anything like that. Obviously, the management do reserve the right not to send the report. Um, obviously, we do incur processing fees, so that's why a refund wouldn't be true. Oh, so you, what do you do now? Just delete it and go on about why I think money? Yes, we would do indeed. I got you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, how can I help? Hi, did it hang up? Oh, yeah, sorry. I can hear you now. How can I help okay. you? Um, I talked to you earlier and you said that the request I did was um, blocked or something, but I looked at the terms and conditions and it says you can say things about like infidelity and stuff like that. So I don't, I'm not sure how that was blocked. So that again, sorry, that you can or can't. No, you, okay. So I I did a report earlier and you said you mm -hmm. would send it to me. Then when I called back, you said it was um, blocked that I wasn't allowed to get the report, but then I clicked the terms and conditions and it says you can do questions about infidelity and stuff like that. Yes, infidelity you can, correct. Right, and that's, that's what I did. Your report was about infidelity, was it? What did you say? So you're, you're, you're saying your report was about infidelity? Yeah, like I answered, I put questions in for it and you had to like answers, and you said something about it being blocked? Yes, yeah, so what were your questions? So it was about during the time that we were away inside of another, like in another state, did I talk to, and I gave the person's individual's name, Ortega, that was one of them. Then it said, are your eyes blue? And I did a couple mm -hmm. of the questions that were on the bottom. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure in that case. Unfortunately, that's not what came through. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's happened there then. Because I, I read that uh, you can do this. Um, yeah, so as long as you can do that. Yeah, in the, yeah, yeah, you would be able to about infidelity, but the questions that were submitted to your order were not to do with infidelity. Yeah, I didn't submit questions that were not to do with infidelity. Okay. All right. See, well, I'll have to look into that then in that case. You want me just to write you the questions now? No, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just need to have a look into this then to see, to see, if, um, to see what can be done. Okay. Um, just remind me again, what was the name on the report? It was Stauk, S-T-A-U-C-H. Uh-huh. That's your surname, is it? Your last name? Yes. Okay, and the first name is? Isa. Okay, and how do I spell that? It's 
T-E-C-I-A. T-E-C-I-A. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, T. Well, let me have a look into that and I can come back to you. Okay. Thank you. What's the best number to get you on? Okay. Right. Thanks a lot now. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Um, she was saying that she had passed a polygraph test and um, she was continuing to prepare her her innocence and that um, she had nothing to do with um, Gannon's disappearance. So we got to hear her speak with an English speaking company and call them back and back. We heard Letitia's phone call trying to pretend she was Harley Hunt, her daughter, always pretending to be someone else so she could call the evidence room and try and get her stuff back. She wanted her her book bag and her MacBook, so she's pretending to be a teenager, but then in the same conversation, she tells the evidence woman, yeah, because I'm a flight attendant. She took great pride in telling people she was a flight attendant when I don't think she had even gotten the job yet. So that's what's wacky, among many other things. Office evidence, this is correct. Yes, um, I'm... The first um, voice that we hear, is that your voice? Correct. And then that second voice, whose voice is that? To, based on your knowledge? Based on my knowledge, Mrs. Stocks. The defendant? Correct. Okay. Earlier, I think you might have been busy or something, so I waited to call back for a little bit. Um, it's okay, sorry. So, uh, what time did you call? I just called you like maybe 15, 20 minutes ago, and you said, hold on. <laughs> no, that wasn't, there, there's four of us working here, so that wasn't me. Yeah. I'm like, I don't recognize your voice. You were busy. Okay, so I'm trying to find out about some contents of mine that was in a car. So um, my, my book bag, which had a lot of my social security card, birth certificates, and stuff in the, that was in a car that's still impounded. And I just want to know, uh, they give me, they gave me the purse one day out of it, but how can I get okay. a book bag? And I need my MacBook for school. Your MacBook. Okay. Um, uh, what is your name? Harley Hunt. Harley Hunt, and do you have a case number so I can look it up? Uh, let's see this. I have this paper. It says agency number. Is that it? Or I have a VIN number? It should be agency. Agency number? All right. 2020 dash 1382. All right. Let's take a look here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. You said it's a book bag? There's a black and white book bag that was in the back seat of the white Jetta. And it has like my passport, my social, my birth certificate, my dog paperwork, my MacBook. Let's see. Yeah, there was like a blue, it was a one blue bag that had a map book in it. And then there was a black and white blue bag, and there was like my diamond rings are in it. And then there was a pink folder that had like my birth certificate and all that in it. Okay. Let's see. Like, I understand they might still be holding the car, but like, I can't like even like work or anything without having my passport because I'm a flight attendant and okay and you said your name is Carly Hunt is that correct Carly Hunt Carly Hunt okay Carly well I can tell you right now everything on this case is evidence so because it's evidence I cannot release it back to you without written authorization from um the basically a higher authority. Um, they have not given us any written authorizations to release. So unfortunately, what you may want to do is contact the detective on this case. Um, have you been in contact with anybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let me go ahead and get the lead, lead detective's um, number for you. And you can call them in reference to this, okay? Okay. All right, hold on just one second. Okay, Harley? Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be Detective Bethel. Okay. And her desk number is going to be... Okay, thank you so much. 
You're welcome. Have a good day. I didn't see any crazy hand signals from Letitia today from the parts I could stay awake for, but Spencer Wilson closing it out was really powerful. He knew something was wrong here. He powerfully said he interviewed neighbors that cared more about Gannon than Letitia did. So he could pick that up. I'm glad he's a powerful, great witness. He was a witness to Letitia turning on those tears like seen turning them off he said more than a normal person would that's today really heavy a lot of leticia's machinations her lies are on display for the jury the jury is asking some great questions like the jury wondered if the medical examiner could see any burns on gannon but unfortunately he was too decomposed at that point to see any the jury definitely got to see enough of that little boy's injuries and i just have to keep reminding myself nope he's up there now he's he's fine he's better he's in heaven i have to keep it in that perspective because it gets too too intense but i am grateful they showed the photos as graphic as they were sometimes that's the only way things hit home with us to let people know like these dark deeds that leticia's alleged to have committed they can't just be brushed aside by just words or whatever you get to see the true nature of her evil exposed he's like this little little boy in the facebook groups all these years you know you hear rumors you hear rumors about her hating ganon and calling him ugly and this beautiful little boy and all these names i think it was just her ire for al that made her go into a rage and do this to albert's son i better close it there that's pretty much what happened today very long day i applaud the people who are able to stay awake and focus on all this stuff for hours and hours the lawyers the judge everyone fighting for justice for gannon colossians 2 6 through 7 so then just as you received christ jesus as lord continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Every time they were saying, oh, she's in the hallway, the next witness, I was like, please let it be Harley Hunt. I don't know if prosecution is saving her until the last minute. And I know just because a person's on the witness list does not mean they'll appear on the stand. And maybe Harley did strike some kind of deal once she got under the grip of Letitia. I don't think Harley did anything directly to Gannon. We'll see if Harley, what she knew and when she knew it, and if she was acting under fear, that's the way I look at her. If Harley grew up with this evil mom, a lot of the time, maybe just being the two of them, going back and forth, been through a lot, her own dad died allegedly of an overdose, all this stuff at such a young age. And then at 17 years old, her mom is acting weird, telling her to buy cleaning supplies, her stepbrother is missing. She may have picked up on oddities and things and maybe she didn't want to think the worst. Maybe Letitia opened up and told her the worst, maybe not. Maybe Harley acted under fear. Maybe Harley feared Letitia will do the same thing to me that she did to Gannon. Ultimately, I hope Harley worked with detectives to expose Letitia to provide more evidence and perhaps she struck a deal. Guys, I'm literally so excited. I just finished my interview at a hiring event for a job position that I've been really wanting for a while now. I got the job. I'm like super excited. I tell you that God has been moving in my life. He's been moving and you know i feel like i've been waiting and i've had like patience and faith but to be true and honest like i was questioning god for a while and i'm like when are things gonna go good for me and you know i know you have a bigger purpose for my life but i was just questioning everything and when i tell you his goodness is just so good i starting nursing school in two weeks and i've been waiting for over a year to do that and i just moved out of my apartment into my own studio apartment because i was living in a super toxic environment and that was just like a blessing in itself i've been without a car for months i was finally able to get a car um and like now i'm getting a position that i've been wanting at the hospital so i can get my experience and like, really just like start my nursing career really starting to question my purpose like what i'm here and called to do and like you know i just felt like there was so much bad going on and i'm finally like having like things work out and it's super overwhelming and makes me so happy and i don't know this, this is just my testimony to say keep trusting god his timing is perfect his plan that he has for you will come stay faithful to him trust in him 
and his timing is perfect that's so hard as a christian is waiting on god's time because you want things done when you want it and i just wanted to film this moment so i could remember it and just share it with you guys i also filmed this because i wanted to start being like more like open with like things i'm going through and like sharing more of my life because this is an aspect of life that i do enjoy is like influencing and just creating videos content i don't even care if one person sees it that doesn't matter to me i just like doing this for myself because it's fun but yeah i'm so excited bye I don't know, we'll see. Stay tuned. I'll keep trying to bring you what I think are the highlights, what's most interesting in these cumulative types of videos. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. Not devil's horns. This means I love you when you do it like that. You can also say, I love you. And I don't think Leticia was doing that. Take care. Mr. Wilson, if you would step forward and raise your right hand, please, sir. Come on up a little here. farther. It's all right. Right there's good. You swear from the testimony about to give this medal be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Go ahead and have a seat in the witness stand. Please watch your step if you step into the stand. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Good. Have you ever testified before? No. We couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm kidding. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury and then spell your name for the record? Yes. Uh, my name is Spencer Wilson, S P E N C E R. Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N. Uh, I'm a reporter with CBS4. All right, that's what I was going to ask you next. Um, I want to jump back even prior to now. Uh, what kind of training education do you have that allows you to be a news reporter? Uh, I have a um, degree from the University of Missouri in broadcast journalism uh, and going on 10 plus years of experience as a television reporter. I've never had the opportunity to do this before as a Jayhawk, I have to say rock chalk to a Missouri grad. I will just say M-I-Z and leave it at that. <laughs> uh, back in January of 2020, uh, who were you working for then? Uh, KKTV 11 News. What was your job assignment in that time period? Uh, I was a multimedia journalist, which just means that I'm a cameraman as well as a reporter at the same time. So one man band. Was it common for you to cover stories in the uh, Pikes Peak region, Colorado Springs, El Paso County? Very common, yes. As a part of your job, would you sometimes interview um, people out in the community? Yes. How, how many interviews do you think you had done at that time of your career? Thousands. On-camera on interviews? Yes. Thousands. Uh, did you start to, at some point, cover the um, Gannon and Stouk case? I did. How did your coverage start in that case? Uh, it was kind of bouncing around between different reporters. Eventually, one day I was put on the, the story, and I can't remember if it was the very first day or if it was the second day I was doing uh, the story, but I was out there and made contact with Lestisha Stout. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, was there anything odd about you making contact or the way the contact unfolded for you? Yes, uh, I can remember it very clearly. I was on the sidewalk. Uh, we were just covering a search that day in the neighborhood. Uh, and there was a big moving truck and also a car pulling out of the neighborhood. Uh, and somebody rolled down their window and started to chastise me for coverage, being out there and reporting on stuff and uh, questioned the way that I was telling the story. Uh, that person was Letitia Stouk. And I realized that. And I said, well, if you got such a problem with this, why don't we go talk about it? So when when this, uh, <clears throat> you, you described two vehicles. A, what you said was a moving truck. Was this like a van, like a utility van? Yeah. And then the other vehicle, what kind of vehicle was that? No better description than just a, a standard car. Okay. Not like a truck, not a SUV, little car car. Which vehicle was the defendant in when the window rolled down and there was words said towards you? The car in the front, the moving uh, car was behind them. She was not in that car. So she was in the, in the actual vehicle, the... That is correct. Passenger vehicle. Mm. Which seat was she in? Oh, gosh. I couldn't tell you. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> I believe driver's seat, but I, I don't feel super clear on that. Was it uh, immediately apparent to you that the person that was saying these words to you was the was Letitia Stouk? Uh, no, it took about five seconds. Uh, and since I had been keeping tabs on the case and uh, the social media along with it, a lot of people were talking about her at the time. And then when it did click, 
I had this moment of, oh gosh, this is the people everyone, person is, everyone's trying to talk to. What was her demeanor like when she did that? Uh, angry, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, she was not excited that I was there. She was not excited to see other members of the media there. Uh, there was a lot of people down there covering the story. Um, and just the words she said to me were basically, you're doing this wrong. Okay. And so then that's when you make this arrangement to go talk somewhere else. Did you in fact do that? That's correct. Uh, I offered to do an interview. Uh, she molded over for a quick second. There was some conversation in the car. Uh, eventually she said, okay, we'll give this a shot. And I said, uh, being the reporter I was for that station, I don't want everybody else to have this at the same time. So let's go somewhere else. And she agreed that it would be a spectacle if we were to do it right there. So we drove to a construction lot, maybe half a mile away. Okay. And just for contextual reference, was this on January 31st, 2020? Correct. So roughly, I guess, four days after Gannon was first reported missing to the police? That's correct. So tell us, how do you go about setting up doing an on-camera interview in a general sense? And then how did you do it in this case? Generally, uh, I will talk to the person beforehand, kind of give them an explanation of what's about to happen. Uh, this is all while I'm handing them a remote microphone that will then clip onto some part of their body somewhere. Uh, and then I begin by asking them to say and spell their full name and explain who they are to the story. Uh, that's fairly standard practice. I think almost every reporter does that ever. The difference on this story uh, was a part of the circumstances where Letitia was willing to talk to me was in the event that she did not have to show her face. And so I tried to get creative because I desperately wanted to have this interview, but at the same time, I could not show her face, which is difficult for TV because we have to show things. I came up with the idea of she looked away from the camera and if I looked towards it, you could still see the conversation happening. That being said, you would not see her face. Let's talk a little bit about this uh, microphone that you just described that would click on somebody's uh, clothing. Is it, does it have a wire that goes to some sort of little control box that is somehow then wirelessly connected to your camera? That's correct. Um, is it typical that that control box to that microphone would stay with the person while that microphone is attached to them? That's correct. If a person walked away from the camera to a different area or you know, proximity wise, would the camera still pick up on anything that that microphone is picking up on? That's correct. Did that happen in this case? Yes. <clears throat> was it odd to you as a reporter that had done thousands of interviews that Letitia was asking you to do this interview but not have her face facing the camera? Not entirely so. Uh, it did make it an unusual situation, but there are some instances where people ask to not have their face shown. We'll sometimes shoot somebody's hands uh, as a video when we're talking to them. Uh, and considering the nature of this interview where she was hesitant to do it in the first place, I was more willing to accept the terms of that agreement. Did the fact that you were able to do this interview, um, was that a good get for you as this news cycle was developing? My newsroom was ecstatic, yes. Um, did you play along with what, uh, what the defendant was telling you during this interview to keep her talking? Uh, as a part of that training you mentioned at the University of Missouri, it is uh, told to us that in order to have a conversation with someone, you cannot agree with what they're saying, but you do need to keep them continuing what they're saying. That is why, as you're nodding right now, I would nod along with whatever was being said. That doesn't necessarily mean I was agreeing to anything. It was meaning that I needed her to keep saying things. Okay. <clears throat> and you did that in this particular case as well? That's correct. All right. Was there a portion of this interview where uh, she asked you actually to redo a portion of it? That's correct. Tell the jury about that circumstance. Um, towards the end of our interview, after we had had a couple different conversations, I was also, mind you, uh, the cameraman in this instance too. So I'd have to stop and walk behind the camera, hit stop, hit start if we needed to redo things. I think we cut it maybe two or three times, took breaks, came back on. Uh, at the very end, this was the thing that was the most interesting to me and why I remember it so much is that uh, I asked, is there anything that you would want to say to Gannon? Uh, in this interview, she had told me that she believed he was coming home. Uh, she said, yes, gave her statement. And I said, okay, we got it. And then she said, you know, what if we did that one more time? And I said, sure, whatever you want. So I went back, turned the camera back on, but this time she was crying. 
when she was not crying the first time and her demeanor completely changed. Uh, it went basically from, I can't wait till you're home. Everyone's going to see that I'm not lying. They owe me an apology to, I will not mimic someone crying, but she was very upset in the second part, uh, which took a second to happen. Based on, on the things that you were hearing coming from the defendant, uh, Letitia Stauk in this case, uh, during that interview, did it seem that she was more focused on how she was being perceived publicly as opposed to um, helping find Gannon? Absolutely. I had talked to neighbors who were more concerned for Gannon. Okay. And uh, Your Honor, may I approach with People's Exhibit 334? You may. I don't know who's the man. Mr. Wilson, I'm holding a disc, People's Exhibit 334. Do you recognize this disc? I do. Why do you recommend it? Uh, I just watched it in the other room. So did you initial or put your signature on it in today's date? That's correct. The contents of this disc, is it a uh, basically a file of that interview? That's correct. Is it fair and accurate representation of your interview? Yes. Can I move for admission of Exhibit 334? No objection. Exhibit 334 will be admitted. Go ahead. And permission to publish, Your Honor. You may. Uh, you are. I am Tisha Stout, which is Gannon's stepmother. Uh, you've been a part of the investigation since the very first time. You were the last person to see him. Is that right? Correct. Uh, what What did you see when you last saw him? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about anything with the case. I would more so be willing to talk about how the community needs to have faith and continue to work together and not make these false accusations, like the things that have been said that I've disappeared from the community. I haven't been there to help, but there's lots of reasons behind that. Uh, reasons like death threats, right? Right. Death threats are one of them. My family's getting lots of death threats. We counted over 20 some death threats already. Um, two, my husband's ex-wife is living in our home. And of course, I'm not coming home to do these things and to help with the family when I was kind of like told I couldn't. Um, and then many other things that happened with the El Paso County Police Department, you know, and in doing the investigation, I was told I wasn't complying. And could I elaborate on that? Please do. Yes. So I asked for an attorney during the interview, uh, and I was denied that by them. I was held because they were blocking the door and I was told I couldn't leave. And that if I would have touched them, they would have probably, you know, said I still wasn't complying or said I was, you know, trying to run away or something. But during the interview, I asked several times, could I stop the interview? Could I get an attorney? Could I stop the interview? Could I get an attorney? I was denied. I was told I couldn't get nothing to drink. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I mean, it was continuously that my constitutional rights were violated. And that's why you say that they said then you weren't cooperating with the investigation. That's why they said I wasn't cooperating at that time. Correct. And why did you ask for an attorney at the time? Well, I asked for an attorney at the time because there was one individual, there was two really good detectives. And so I'm not, you know, going to talk bad about detectives, but the tactics they started to get when I would answer questions, they try to, you know, they're detectives. They're supposed to twist. The one main goal is to find Gannon. But during that time, some of those things made me feel uncomfortable the way they were saying things. So I immediately stopped and felt like, felt like an attorney would help me with some of the vocabulary and things like that, that I needed help with and understand some of the things that they were asking. I'm going to shift gears to what has become a huge online presence of people right. obviously trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. help find Gannon. But at the same time, sometimes it just feels like rumor mongering. Have you seen any of those comments yourself? We have. And see, that's one of the main things we haven't uh, been around in the public eye because we, I didn't want to expose my family to it if all these things were going on. You know, there was comments about Gannon getting pushed off the hike and there was comments about this. And that's just not true. I took care of Gannon for the last two years in our home because his mother didn't want to do it. And I would never, never, ever hurt this child. And I know there's some questions out there about, okay, so tell me what happens. That's up to the investigations when they end up letting you guys know, but I've cooperated with them, even to the point that we were held with a gun and my daughter, a 17 year old who serves our country in the United States Air Force, who has never committed a crime or done anything wrong in her life, was put in handcuffs over the keys that was in her purse so they could take her car. And they weren't in there. They weren't even in her car, I mean, in her purse. 
And they were in my pocket. You originally didn't even know if it was a uh, law enforcement officer? I didn't know it was a law enforcement officer because when he came out, I guess he was putting his jacket on and it, it wasn't necessarily his fault. He was adjusting and happened to catch me. But I saw the gun and I panicked originally and kind of thought, oh gosh, I got the, like, who's this guy? And then once I realized it was the sheriff's office, I was totally okay, but they still had a gun and told me they were going to shoot me. But I was really concerned about my daughter asking why she was being detained in handcuffs and things like that, when that shouldn't even happen for a child. That shouldn't happen for someone who was standing inside of a store shopping because we couldn't have any clothes because all of our clothes were here. If we came here and got clothes, you know, we would be harassed. So she went to purchase some underwear and things like that and was putting the handcuffs in the store you know, and then brought out with men with guns. And there's, that, that's just not okay. You know, they could have approached me and said, hi, I'm with El Paso County. Can I please get this instead of the way that it happened? I'm just going to check your chat. Doing great. I want to make sure that we're still good on recording. Still can hear you okay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like we're good. Everyone's while my mic be out. And I want to make sure that's not going to happen here. Okay. I should try and clarify here, not necessarily crime rates, but the way that people are reacting online to rumors about you with the search. Oh, oh yes, wow. The rumors have gotten so bad. Uh, I pretty much have been told at least 10 different ways that these people have these conspiracy theories. I guess they watch a lot of law shows and maybe they have all these theories on how um, Gannon is dead. And that's what they're saying. So I'm like, why are you saying Gannon is dead? He is not dead. We are going to find Gannon. And that's the main goal that we all have, my family has. Just because you haven't seen us, we have that same goal. And we've been out searching. My aunt has been out searching. My family has been out searching. We all have been doing that together so that we could protect each other. How does it feel when not only you have a lost child who you are in care of, but then people blaming you for that child and pain? You know, I, I'm just ready for Gannon to come home. Most importantly, for him to see his family. But second, I am going to be so ecstatic when I'm able to say to people that I hope they have a really sincere apology for all these theories that have came out online, for all the things they said that I have done or people have done. And I just want everyone to know that we're going to find Gannon. And I love him so much. I've helped taking care of him for so long. Can you talk to me a little bit about him? I don't know him. Gannon is so kind and he loves to play video games. That's one of his favorite things. He loves Sonic and Mario and, you know, he's always helpful. And I, he was always so helpful with the dogs around the house. And we have two little cute dogs and he was always like a person I could say, Gannon, can you go do this? And he would do it right away. You know, sometimes with kids, we have to remind them and things like that. And that's okay. But he was so sweet and able to help anyone. He could notice when you're sick and say, are you okay? And such a kind heart. Um, I know you just said that you can't say anything about the investigation, so you can just say so again if you can't answer this, but is there anything we can hear about the hike? Was there a hike? You don't, that just seems like rumors right now. You know what? Um, could we bring uh, my daughter over here? Because she can, she can go and say that, you know, she came home from work after the hike and she can verify that Gannon was at our home. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. If she doesn't want to, that's okay, but you're allowed to say after. Not okay so far? Yes, I need Harley. I need Harley because they want you to verify what's getting in at home after the hike. Because you didn't go to the hike, but you came home from work. Hmm? Want me to just say yes? No, just answer the question. Yes, you, you came home from work and you, ver you can verify Gannon was at home. Yeah. I told her she didn't have to be too in depth because she is still you know, a child, but I want to make sure that someone knows that there's another person to verify that Gannon. Sure. Does she need to hold this? No. Yes. So I came home later that evening. I was at work and I can verify that he was there that night. So there, there was a hike that you guys went on, but then you guys came home. Yes. Where'd you guys go hiking? Garden of the Gods. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, I guess when... And then we ate Burger King afterwards. So, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um... And then it just was, I'm going to go to play at a friend's house. And then it was just, uh, I'm off to go to play at a friend's house. Unfortunately, I'm not able to like comment on that anymore. And for that reason is because some things have been turned and twisted. And, you know, that was one of those stories you were talking about where people say things. Um, we had to hear things like who would let their child go out at dark and, and things like that. And that, and that's just why I don't want to answer that. Um, if I had to give 
I'm not gonna say that part. That's okay. Never mind. I could take that out. I understand that it gets tricky with yeah. people stuff. Do you feel like I asked you what I need to? Do you feel like this is gonna help kind of turn the tide of what feels like a witch hunt, in my opinion? I hope is am I on camera now? You are okay. Still. Okay. Um, I think that a lot of people can see that I'm not missing and see that I am being cooperative. And but to me, it's okay that they think those things because my the way someone thinks about me, I don't have a problem with that. My main thing is I would never want someone to think that I would hurt Gannon or any of the children in our home because that's just not the case. I've spent my whole entire life working so hard in education. Um, there was even things online that was talking about my education license and I shouldn't even be a teacher. And they just didn't know that. Like we moved on a military move and I didn't finish out my contract. So I gave up my license in that state. Um, it had nothing to do with any criminal activity, you know, or any of those things. And it just got blown out of proportion on my professional status, you know, and do you feel like these are just internet detectives who think they know what they're doing? It definitely is. And you know, here's the thing that kind of saddens me. It's like, if you're going to talk about someone like that and have a witch hunt out for them, why would you even care like about doing those things? Because this is a child. You're telling me that you're just as mean. You're just as hateful to talk about someone else like that. That's how I feel. Like, we just should not. We should all come together and wait until the end and, and see what happens because Gannon's going to come home. Any message for Gannon? The message for Gannon I have is, Gannon, when you get here, you'll be able to truly tell what happened. And then I really hope I get a sincere apology from everyone who has made all those things, especially from my husband. We just wanted to add a message to Gannon from my family is that we love you and miss you. And we hope that you come home soon. And Gannon, I can't wait till you can come home and let everyone know that you're okay. We love you. <clears throat> Mr. Wilson, it's probably very fairly obvious, but the person that you were interviewing there, is she here in the courtroom? She is. Will you please point around and describe what she's wearing for the jury? Picture. You're pointing over to the right-hand side of the courtroom? That's correct. Female at defense table? That's correct. All right, ask that the record reflect to identify the defendant. The record will so reflect. Uh, Mr. Wilson, um, did the defendant appear to be of sound mind to you while you were with her? And yeah. Your Honor, I'm going to go no, he can uh, give his opinion regarding what he thought about her mental state at the time. Yes. Uh, did she seem to be able to answer questions to you logically and give coherent answers? Yes. Uh, you mentioned that uh, to your memory that she was driving the passenger vehicle. Yes. Did she seem to be following the rules of the road? Yes. Could she stop when she was supposed to stop? Yes. Uh, was she driving on the right side of the road as opposed to the left? That's correct. Um, during that interview, uh, do you remember, is there a point in time where she's referring to Gannon in the present sense and then she changes it to the past tense? Yes. Uh, do you remember when that was? Uh, we just watched it. Okay. Now. Sorry. If we can queue up uh, five minutes and 50 seconds, please. We're going to just replay that portion, Judge, because it happens fairly quickly. approach me approach hi I'm with all part of the way that child you know I I'm just ready for Gannon to come home most importantly for him to see his family Gannon to come home most importantly for him to see his family but second I am just for the, so that we're um, tracking so it's, it's paused right now at five minutes and 33 seconds and then we'll get to that five minutes and 50 seconds section. Go ahead and play it, please. I'm going to be so ecstatic when I'm able to say to people that I hope they have a really sincere apology for all these theories that have came out online, for all the things they said that I have done or people have done. And I just want everyone to know that we're going to find Gannon. And I love him so much. I've helped taking care of him for so long. Can you talk to me a little bit about him? I don't know him. 
Ganon is so kind and he loves to play video games. That's one of his favorite things. He loves Sonic and Mario and, you know, he's always helpful. And I, he was always so helpful with the dogs around the house. And we have two little cute dogs. And he was always like a person I could say, Ganon, can you go do? Was that significant to you that it changed um, in mid statement uh, from present sense to past tense? Yeah, I'm asking his impression of it. Now I'm going to sustain the objection. I okay. think the jury can draw their conclusions about it. I'm not sure that his opinion about it uh, adds any extra relevance. Okay. So the objection sustained. Okay. Uh, what about when this interview ended? Uh, did she get back into the driver's side, uh, uh, driver's seat of that passenger vehicle of driveway? Yes. She again appeared to be driving and following the rules of the road. That's correct. Thank you. That's all I have. Cross examination. And one of the reasons. Oh, I'm sorry that she expressed she didn't want her face to be seen and she had concerns for her safety. Correct. No further questions. Redirect. Okay. Do any of the jurors have any questions for Mr. Wilson? <clears throat> okay, just, just write it down. Right and looks like just the one. And counsel approach, please. Uh, Mr. Wilson, did the defendant stop crying immediately following the interview? Did her demeanor change following the interview? Yes. Uh, let me ask those separately so that um, it's clear which one is you're answering to. Did she stop crying immediately following the interview? Uh, quicker than a normal person would stop crying. And did her demeanor change following the interview? Yes. All right. I will allow reasonable follow-up as to those questions only. Uh, prosecution? No, no. Defense? Did the camera shut off immediately after the interview, or was there film that was not shown that would have shown her demeanor afterwards? Uh, the relevant pieces of information, the camera was still rolling previous to, or I'm sorry, post that interview. That being said, the microphone was removed from Letitia Stauk and also I left the scene. So there would have been though video to confirm what you're saying about when she stopped crying. Uh, it would have been outside of this view of the camera. I'm not sure if she had the microphone on that at the time. Okay. And that wasn't played for the jury. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Okay. <laughs>